What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zero to Diamond podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Carruth. I'm on a mission to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry by helping you master your skills on the phone, conquer your fears, and changing your mindset. Now, let's get into the show. What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? How are we doing? I hope everybody's well today. Um, I've been showing property all day myself. Uh, had a couple of clients rolling into town, showing some properties, um, followed up with some stuff, did a bunch of stuff, man. The day was a really good day for me, super productive. Welcome to this week's show. Um, I'm your host, Ricky Carruth, and today we got Zach Manick on the program. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on the program today, man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me as always. Zach is uh, Zach is not like a longtime agent. The reason I wanted to bring Zach on is because he really gets the mindset that I'm trying to convey to the world um, about success in real estate, success in general, um, long term actions, long term thinking for short term gain and long term at the same time. But uh, man. Like, um, tell everybody a little bit about, I guess, your background, how you got into real estate, and, and, and let everybody kind of know a little bit about you. All right. So, um, so quick, quick, quick overview. Let's see. I I didn't have a job until graduating high school because I played uh, football, and that was like a full time job in high school. So my first job was like at a as a barista for a couple years. And then I moved to San Luis Obispo. I tried to go to Cuesta College and that whole thing, partied too much, and uh, moved back home and got a real job at a distribution, parts distribution company connected to the uh, commercial vehicle industry. Mm -hmm. um, they do like wholesale distribution for electronics and stuff. I was there for six years. Mm -hmm. So from, I'd say, I don't know, 21, 22, I'm 30 now. Um, I don't know, whatever the timing was, I worked in every uh, department. It was like kind of a paid internship gig, planning for me to go into sales there. Um, but after, you know, the bureaucracy and the politics of the whole company, I just kind of got burnt out after working in every department. And um, it, was, it was kind of a family owned atmosphere. So there just wasn't really much room to grow unless it was like a regional sales job, which, you know, the, the, the life balance, the work life balance is really out of whack. You're on the road like all the time. Mm. So I decided to leave. My sister actually got into real estate my last couple of years. I was thinking about leaving. And uh, I've been, so it's been about four years now in March that, uh, that I've been in real estate. So right before I left, I knew also one thing that turned me off from the job that I was at was I just hated the hamster wheel feeling of it. Like every day doing the same thing or, or groundhog day, whatever analogy you want to use where every day I feel like I was doing the same thing. I had to answer to people, whatever, but you know, I was never like an inventive person. And, and once my sister got into real estate, I just thought, man, I, I could do that. Like I could, I, you know, I'm real confident in talking to people and it just kind of comes naturally. I'm not really that nervous, all that stuff. So I jumped in it. Um, I was actually working part time at Starbucks for a while. And then the last brokerage I was at, Coldwell Banker, the sales manager took a liking to me and kind of brought me up as his protege slash assistant, gave me a real good opportunity so I can quit Starbucks and um, pay me like 500 bucks a week to do like TC work, transaction coordinating and kind of learn the business. You know, he'd let me put my sign writer up on his on his listing, stuff like that. Dude, what an opportunity, bro! Yeah, it was, it was, it really was, and uh, and and honestly, it, it really it kind of it got me out of the Starbucks. I, I went full time in real estate like pretty pretty soon, probably I'd say six months to a year after I, I started Starbucks, which just was miserable, by the way. But uh, yeah, so once I went full time, you know, I I started out. Um, you know, various coaches, Coldwell Banker, the one I was at was brought up to the Mike Ferry deal. So they really pushed that. So I was, I was, you know, I had no problem calling expireds, calling FISBOs, cold calling and using those scripts and stuff. But, um, you know, I just never really had a system to like clearly track everything and funnel everything and 
that was the one thing I was missing. And they were pushing, you know, Coldwell Banker, at least the one I was at, they were charging a 7% franchise fee and they were pushing all their systems to capture all that. And I, and, and it, it didn't work half the time. And I, I, I remember just getting paid and being so pissed because 7% of every paycheck was going to something that didn't work. Right. So anyway, to move it along, um, I did okay. My my second year, I sold about three million in, in real estate, which was, I guess, pretty good. Um, I don't remember how many sides or anything like that. But then, starting last year, um, I had a real, real hard time. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, oh, I didn't have like the consistency and stuff like that that I found in ZTD. So I felt kind of lost. Like I was trying all this different stuff. And uh, it's not that the expireds and fizzbuzz didn't work. It's just the way that it was taught to me. I did, it didn't feel natural. Yeah. And I and and then and then that coupled with the beginning of 2017, I had a listing. I really started out strong where I closed and I felt good. But then I had a listing that fell apart where I had the buyer too, and the buyer would have been like a lot of future business, and he thought it was my fault, even though I had nothing to do with it, and I lost him, and I, I just was like fed up. So I actually like. Kind of stepped back from the business, never fully left, but um, I started a credit repair company thinking like, I'm going to I'm gonna blow this up. And that's now become like passive income for me. Uh, I actually started that company and it's doing well. Um, but uh, then I started watching your stuff probably, I don't know, I, I signed on in October. So I probably started watching a couple months before that and following and stuff. And then, you know, it's been life changing, honestly, since I since I joined. You know, now here we are, um, you know, after signing on in, in October. So, yeah, that's kind of my story in a nutshell, I guess. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Um, a couple of things, guys. Um, everybody watching on Facebook and also we're live on Instagram. If anybody on Instagram has any questions for me or Zach, feel free to type it in. Same on Facebook. Zach is a four year agent. Um, he's still in the building stages of his business, but I wanted to bring him on the show just to have a different perspective. You know, I've had a lot of really top producers on the program and I really wanted to have somebody that was kind of still in that, that mindset of just like fighting through the beginning stages and trying to figure out, find your way and figure out what direction you want to go in and, you know, trying new things and figuring out what works and what doesn't work and all the stuff that newer realtors go through to try to find their way. I wanted to have somebody on the program like that. So, Man, like back when I started and it took me eight months to make my first sale, I uh I was asking my um uh I was asking my my broker at the time, I said, Man, what can I do? Can I uh like can I sweep the floors or like is there anything I can do here at the company that I can make like, you know, some money somehow or a job or something? Like I was like it would have been amazing if I could have been like a transaction coordinator for $500 a week and learn the business and yeah. stuff like that, like you did, man. That was an incredible offer. That was like an yes. opportunity of a lifetime, bro. It was. It was. Mm. It was. And there was a weird transition that happened there where I was, I, I'm, I'm just a loyal dude. So like the, the guy that gave me the opportunity, I, I was, you know, hundred percent on board with him, but I was so upset about the franchise fee because there was a lot of money I was losing for something that I, I didn't think was worth it whatsoever. And I'll still argue that, but uh, he ended up leaving soon after I left and started his own brokerage. And for whatever reason, he never told me he was ever going to start his brokerage and it kind of blew my mind. But um, after, after I left and uh, is when kind of everything kind of, I wouldn't say fell apart, but I kind of just started doubting, you know, cause I didn't have the support. I didn't have, the uh, the systems and the structure of my business, like I, you know, I signed up for two coaching programs. Like soon after, I thought I was figuring it out, and it wasn't my style. And uh, then I really got burnt out because I was like, "Well, I paid these guys and it didn't work, man. This this business must be just you know luck and and smoke and mirrors." But uh, yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of interesting where where I'm at now because I felt like I had it figured out after my second year. Like I said, I did like three million. The negotiating. Um, handling clients, uh, communicating the deals. That was never an issue for me. Um, it was, it was always just the consistency of the hard work and, and having the systems to get up and actually like do it, you know, and, and I just didn't have the support, you know what I mean? So, um, as I said, you know, that, that didn't come until I signed up with your stuff and now it's been like life changing. So it's, it's pretty awesome, uh, to look back on.
So, so you're saying like you didn't have like the drive, like the work, like what do you mean the hard work? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, because um, I, I just was, I, there, there wasn't, first of all, the, the coaches, I think the, a big part of it was they weren't in the, in the business anymore, or they said, you know, so the, I didn't really have a mentor to really look up to after I left Coldwell Banker and that the guy I was talking about. And, you know, I, I guess I'm not, I, I need that mentorship that, you know, for the self-motivation or whatever to follow to really get me going. And I was just overthinking everything, reading too much, signed up for too much. And I think I just got information overload to where I just kind of said, screw it. To the point where I, I literally would like get out of bed, like, super depressed like not even wanting to do anything you know what i mean but then i remember the simplicity is what really turned me on with zero to diamond because you like only recommended two books and i was like All right, i already follow grant cardone so i like that and then the slight edge is such a simple yet just powerful book in general uh that kind of just put you know every day it's just simple actions lead to huge results and and that was in line with what you were teaching so it's like a real just focus singular message to where I didn't feel overwhelmed anymore. And it was like, okay, I can get behind this cause I don't feel like I'm going a hundred different directions, you know? And, um, and that's, I, I guess that's what, once I realized that it was like little actions and, and, and I wasn't like thinking, and I wasn't so overwhelmed with all this like other stuff of how I'm going to get to my end goal. It just all kind of fell in place. I just started doing one thing at a time, made like one phone call, 50 phone calls, 100 phone calls, got the, you know what I mean? Got the dialer and then just kept, and, and now you know, it's just building. It's just like building now, you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's just kind of interesting. And now, now I'd say the self-motivation just comes from like, I'm addicted to getting those emails and having good conversations. Like, my, yeah. my mindset has completely shifted because I made those commitments of just starting out doing the little things, if that makes sense. It's kind Dude, of hard it's, to It's amazing whenever you, you hit that point, if any, if a realtor ever hits the point where they get the concept of not going after deals and not trying to pressure people and not trying to close the deal and not trying to set an appointment. And the yeah. real goal is, I want to make an impression on this person that they 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 feel like I'm gonna I'm not the same as all the other agents out there. Um, give them something different, create a relationship long term. They're always going to use you forever. They're going to refer their friends and family. It's amazing, like yes. what happens when that mind shift happens. But it's so hard for people to make that mind shift because they need money now, and they yeah. think that the mind shift is going to put it to where they're not going to make money for years. Well, like, and, yeah. yeah. No, I know. You're, I think a big part of it, though, is is the 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 old school coaches. Uh, that's what they teach. They teach close for the appointment right away. And if they don't give it to you, then screw them. Move on. I literally yeah. I've heard I've heard multiple coaches. One of them in the in the program I signed up for before this one that would basically say that on the phone when I'd call him is it, it was a similar setup. And I'm not going to name names, but. I would call him and I'd tell him things and he'd basically just be like, oh, well, they're idiots. Like, screw them, move on. Like, uh, and to me, it's just like, I'm not, I don't want to be a used car salesman, no offense to anybody or, you know, that, that whole moniker analogy. Like, I don't, I don't, I, it's, it's not my personality, you know, and that's like, I want to build relationships. And, and I kept just like thinking this business can't be that way. You know what I mean? I felt like I was just sold something that wasn't, it wasn't true, but yeah. once I, once I realized it and I saw that someone as successful as you actually were doing it, built and you, and you were basing your whole thing off of building relationships and, and I started just applying it. I mean, it's just, it's such a huge mindset shift, you know? So that, that was, that's a big, big thing that to, to really, to really grasp for sure. No, man, no, it's, it's so hard for people to like understand because they're like, I need now business, you know? And it's like, okay, I'm telling you how to get now business. You go after relationships and you, you know, like when you, when you don't like, like so many coaches want you to call and, and, and set that appointment and, uh, you know, you know, make that, a, make that, 
you know, close the deal and all this stuff. And really, to me, all that stuff turns people away from you. Yeah. You know, here's the thing, man. Whenever, like, whenever you're talking to a prospect and you're and you're going to close the deal all the time, sure, you're going to close some deals here or there, right? Mm -hmm. But see, what you're missing, man, are, is those four to five people a day that you turned off that right. would have would have done business with you in the future. You right. know, if you weren't so pushy and you weren't trying to handle objections and you weren't trying to close deals, they want somebody real and genuine and that's right. out for them. Well, and what I've noticed too is you also don't get far, far enough along in the conversation, you know, like since I've had the mind that what we're talking about with my mindset shift and I'm taught, I'm so much calmer because I'm not putting so much pressure on closing the deal that I'm actually listening to what they're saying and asking tons and tons and tons and tons of questions, you know, instead of like going straight for the deal. And if they say no, it's like, okay, well, screw you. Bye. It's like, okay, well, no, that's cool. That's cool. Like, you know, I'm not here to sell you anything right now, but you know, this, are you thinking of this or, or why are you saying this or, you know, and then those, those questions are so huge. I like just, just the amount of calls, that I've made now, you know, since being in the program, I've had so many conversations where the the conversation starts out with there. You could tell they're like, please don't talk to me. But then because it's so calm and, and you just kind of gradually just let it turn into a conversation, all of a sudden they just start telling you stuff. It's like, hold on, let me get my pen. I got to write this down like super fast or I can't even keep up with what you're saying. You know what I mean? But yeah. if you're always going for the deal, you're not getting that because because you're 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 closing yourself off to that, you know. You're and it's just I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. And and uh, this way is so much better. I is is all I have to say about that. Well, when you're when you're trying to close the deal, you sound like every other agent. And when you yeah. sound like every other agent, they don't. I mean, they can find those are a dime a dozen. Anybody, you know, there's millions of agents out there like that. When they run across an agent who says who doesn't say, hey, have you thought about selling your house? And they run into an agent that says, hey, there's a house down the road that just listed or sold or whatever, and I didn't know if there's something that I could do to help you today. They're like, right. well, what, what, what is this? Like, right. what, who is this? Is this my brother? Is this my cousin? Is this my, right. you know? It's like a family. Like, you got to get into the mindset that you're talking to, like, friends and family right. and, like, make it a real conversation. And like you said, go deep with those questions. Yeah. No, they really do appreciate it. You know, if you, they really do appreciate it. If you, when, yeah. when if you can, if you can properly communicate, or sin, I, I should say sincerely communicate that, like it has to come from a sincere place and it takes, it takes time. I mean, I'm not, I'm not acting like I got it all figured out. You know, everyone knows that, you know, I signed up in October, but just by making thousands of calls now, I feel so much more confident where that sincerity wasn't there to start. Mm -hmm. And now, now all the all the fear and and the reluctance has gone away to where the sincerity is just naturally there now like i'm actually myself on the phone call rather than mm -hmm. thinking i remember when i first started i couldn't wait to get off the phone so i'd just be like okay great and i'd be happy i made it through and i just wanted to hang up right away and now it's like i want to keep talking keep talking keep talking and so once that sincerity starts coming through is when they really start giving you the golden nuggets that you need you know yeah, yeah. When, when, when people, um, when you have that sincerity, people are like happy to hear from you. Like they want to hear from an agent that's sincere and wants to help and stuff. It's like that's one way you can get over your fears of cold calling is by when you understand this mindset, this concept and you and you apply it for a little while and you see the results and you see how people react. It's like your fear goes out the window mm -hmm. and then you're in this mindset like, OK, I got direction. And by being sincere, not only am I going to build a bigger business that really means something, I'm also going to help more people. I'm going to make more money and I'm going to go to sleep at night every night knowing that I'm helping people. I'm doing the right thing and yeah. I'm building yeah. a I'm building a huge business yeah. that's going to support my family for generations yeah. and generations. You know what huge. I mean? Huge. Yeah. yeah. So hey, what's, your, what's your goals and stuff for this year? Like, what's your goals for 2018? I want to do 12 million. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, 300,000 commissions? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. 
I don't have it in front of me, but basically 12 million sales volume is kind of where once I break down from my brokerage split and the taxes, like where I want my salary to be, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's around 200,000 after all that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, 12 million, which is like a huge, huge jump. But, uh, I think it's so totally. Was the 3 million your biggest year? Yeah. I mean, that was my second year. And then so 27 business for four years. So your first yeah. year you did nothing. Second year did three yeah. mil. And then what happened first, the third year? Yeah. First. So first year I did maybe, you know, a few deals. Yeah. You know, maybe a million and then second year, three million. But then last year was my third year. So 2017. And, uh, I only did because I, I literally just completely stepped back from the business, almost left the business, but kept my license going. I just, I said, I, I told everyone I wasn't done, but I wasn't active. You know what I mean? So I think I did no more than a million last year. I don't okay. even know. Yeah. That was the year that like you kind of stepped back and did the credit repair for a second and tried to figure out what you wanted to do with your life. I thought about going into the CHP. <laughs> like I was just looking at, all these different, you know, maybe even electrician. And I was, and then I just, you know, I started doing all the research. I was like, there's no way that. Well, I, you went from, you went from making, doing 3 million in sales your second year. I mean, that's pretty good for your second year. I mean, that's pretty good, you know, income. Yeah, it was. No, it was. It just, uh, you know, I, I, I was being, I was being, uh, I was being soft, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm very, very competitive. And it really was, it was a weird, uh, weird deal for me because my mindset it wasn't natural but i just was completely in the in the dumps you know yeah and i really just had to slog through it and um the only way that i got out of it was fully committing 110 percent and then just doing the little actions every day just in in what you teach in your program you know honestly that's why i say it's life-changing and, and that's all it is it's just little actions i mean even even and, and it's bled into everything else that I've done. Like, you know, just like you say, like an active lifestyle, I was 30 pounds heavier probably last year at this time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just thought to myself, I'm competitive. Like, why am I not doing more competitive things? You know, I need to reactivate that in my head. And then yeah. when I saw the way you attack business, I was like, that's where I should, I should look at real estate. Like I see all these other guys doing it. I'm like, I know the way they were in high school. I grew up with them. I, I would, blow them out of the water if I had the resources or, you know, just got, just figured it out. Yeah. And so I kind of clicked back into that and made a full commitment. I lost 30 pounds and now, you know, my business is really just starting to take off. I mean, I know, yeah. I know once, once, once the escrow actually closes, I mean, I, I know I posted that I got my first listing from cold calling. Um, but once it, once that first escrow, I know the floodgates are going to open and then oh, it's yeah. just, game over and oh, yeah because there's so much lined up from the calls i did like before the new year like probably 15 20 listings that i'd yeah you know, yeah 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 it's all about momentum man yeah you know like uh you momentum, momentum. Yeah. yeah once you get the momentum going you got to keep it going you got to push harder and harder and harder and harder you know you and can't the off the gas pedal <laughs> the opposite is true if you let it completely die then it'll it'll literally kill you uh, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, um, yeah, literally kill you. I mean, people commit suicide because of that. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah. it's it's literally that that fine. But that's what the slight edge teaches, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's 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 as easy to do the right thing as it is the wrong thing. And so you can get in these bad habits where you're doing the wrong thing just slightly every day, and all of a sudden you become someone you're not. And it's just a complete opposite is true, just like what you teach. And yeah. That's basically the way it's worked for me. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I say, like for me, the best policy is, is just to stay as busy as I can stay, you know, mm -hmm. like just stay busy doing deals, talking to people, you know, putting out fires, closing stuff, listing stuff, you know, and now I'm doing a show, writing books, speaking, coaching, yeah. do, you know, videos. I'm just stay busy, man. You just got to yeah. stay after it. You know, I'll tell you why one, one big reason why people don't chase their dreams. I think I figured it out by because of this coaching program I'm doing and like how much like heart and soul and effort I put into it. I think I've realized why people don't chase their, their dreams because you have to, 
Like if there's something you're real passionate about, you have to literally like go after it, like fully commit and give it everything you've got, all your resources for like a couple years for free, yeah. you know, and that's tough. Like you have to work your finger to the bone and really give it all you have and get to the point where like there were a lot of like really low points for me last year in my first year of doing the coaching because, you know, it's like, why aren't people signing up or why aren't people buying my books or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, it, it's the same thing with uh, real estate being brand new. Real yeah. estate is a passion. You know, yeah. it's like you have a dream. You want to help people buy and sell properties. Right. It's for those first two years, you got to think, man, like you got to think this is if this is something real that's going to be big for you. You really have to think the first two years is this is huge learning curve and you're probably going to work your your tail off for basically free. Yeah. The, you know, um, I mean, any any successful business. I mean, like one of my favorite shows is Shark Tank and and any successful person, you know, they're leveraging so hard on capital to where they're literally not profitable until like three, four years or even longer. And they're they're hedging all their bets. It's going to work, and it's just such. It's so hard to not get anything and still do the the, the hard work every day. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy um, that I'm even here talking like this. You know what I mean? Because I didn't really. I always I always kind of doubted that it was like really realistic. You know, but uh, um, it's. But at the same token, it's simple though. You know, it's just simple daily actions, making the calls and doing the work, you know what I mean? Going to the gym and working out, like just don't be, don't be a little bitch, honestly, as Grant Cardone says. <laughs> it's like you know? I say, man, this stuff is simple but not easy. Like the yeah. fundamentals of it all is yeah, yeah. really, really easy, like really right. simple. If you lay it out, it's like, okay, this is who you call, this is what you say, this is what you do afterwards, this is what you do every day. It's like, okay, that's easy. But it's hard to do it over the course of years and decades. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and you just you keep breaking through these levels where you have to. It's like what you say. I, I think you said in one of your uh, YouTube videos, you know, and then it becomes a whole nother level of. Uh, it, it gets it gets it's a whole it's a whole nother level of not hardness, but um, you know, there's there's more barriers once you get really successful. And you still have to make those calls because you know what I mean? Like to keep pushing your business further, even though you, you've got a lot of business, that's a whole nother level. It's like you keep reaching these new levels. Mm. So it's never ends, but no. you just got to keep doing it and staying, staying busy. You know, dude, when you, there is no such thing as the top, like yeah. the, like the top doesn't exist, man. Like, like where I am. Oh, yippee. You know, all that stuff, dude, there are people that are crushing my numbers out there. Um, you know, like in life, you know, like there's some real, I mean, dude, there's people that do, you know, there's a lot of people that do like 80 million a year, you know, in revenue, not, not realtors. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man, maybe there's some realtors, but there's like people that do like 10 million, 20 million, 30 million a year, 40 million, 50 million, you know, there's some serious, you know, heavy hitting people out there and, uh, and there's even higher levels than that. So you just can't. You just can't think, oh, I want to get here and then that's going to be that. And then and then, you know, I can slow down or I'm there or whatever. Now, once you get to where you want to be, that's really just the beginning. You know, right. Right. I mean, it really is, man. That's just the beginning. Yeah. This guy, Sergio, said he reached out to you. He said uh, he joined the coaching program and he reached out to you. Yeah. And had, you had nothing but good things to say about the program and yeah. um, seeing your Awesome. Yeah, he's he's happy to be a part of the coaching program. What's up, Sergio? Yeah. He uh he called me one day and we talked for a while and uh he signed up and stuff. He's brand new. That was like when was that? That was like a couple days ago, I think. Yeah, I think I talked to him a couple weeks ago, so that's cool. Right on. Welcome. Yeah, Sergio, we're uh, glad to have you, dude. Reach out to us. Yeah. So your goal is 12 million this year. Uh, what do you take us through a day? Like what's your day look like? What's your, what's your daily routine and like, how do you lay out what you're going to do? So the, uh, I, I make my calls first and usually I, 
not usually. Um, I want my calls to be done by one o'clock. And then that's something I learned in the past is, is the time blocking thing. I want to, I want my afternoon clear to set appointments. Mm. So from like nine to 12, just like what you talk about, I generally am making calls and, um, depending on where I'm at in my call list, you know, I may spend a little bit of time like getting ready. I really do a lot of research before I jump into a call list by creating a, you know, my CMA and, and doing, you know, what's actually going on around the call. So I'm prepared. So that would be like the beginning. First I work out in the morning. Uh, usually unless I'm playing tennis at night, then, then I'll, then I'll just play at like five, five thirty. But generally that's the way my morning goes work out, you know, coffee, make my calls. And then if I don't have an appointment, I usually will finish my list make more calls or follow up with all the follow up that I do. So write my handwritten notes, send out my emails, um, do my follow up. But now, now that, um, the afternoons are also safe for follow up. So now that all the all the calls that I've done, you know, before the new year, I have it linked from my Mojo to my Google Calendar and whatever reminders telling me to call this person. So now that follow up starting to like really stack up because, um, you know, I'm calling everybody that said they they want me to call them, even if they didn't necessarily say they were interested in doing something. But although there were a lot of people that did, so. That's usually how my afternoon goes if I don't have appointments. It's real basic, you know. I try to keep it as, as simple as possible. And then at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, I've started at the very beginning of the day, and I learned this through Slide Edge. Uh, actually, one thing I do is, is just real simple stuff. So I make my bed, which I never used to do. I, I, I saw that from a Navy SEAL guy. Um, you know, I, I do a few things of gratitude. Uh, and then I, I kind of write out just real simply what my plans are. And I'm not as busy as you yet, so it's it's not much to write. <laughs> so I just kind of get through that and then and then I jump on my calls. So that's 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 actually real important. I want to make sure to add in there because um, it's just little habits make everything else kind of fall in line um, and keep you just in a really good mindset. So it's really important. And uh yeah, and then so afternoons are, are for appointments, and then if I'm going to work out, play tennis, and I then I do that. Um, but or or I get ready for my next list. So I'm doing a lot, a lot of a lot of market research too, like in my MLS. Like since I joined this program, I'm like a wizard on my MLS now, which is huge. Yeah, yeah, it's all. I mean, you, you got to know your market, man. You got to know. See, like that's the thing that separates a lot of agents is is. If you're studying the new listings every day and the, and the fresh closings and what goes under contract and all that stuff, it's like you're right on top of the market. And when, some, when you're talking to people on the phone, you already know a lot about all this extra market activity that's going on, you know? Yeah, yeah that's that's something that I, I highly recommend is that's made me really comfortable on the phones is, is don't spend a ton of time. Just get really good at MLS to where you can pull a CMA really quickly around your thing like no basic things like when you're calling into a neighborhood that you're calling into a specific gated community or a specific subdivision because that subdivision could sell a lot different than right across the street to this other subdivision you know or condos whatever you're dealing with do that research beforehand because sellers will ask you and if you and they'll ask you to test you you can tell they're testing you and you want that in front of you or at least to feel knowledgeable and the more you do that before every time you call and the quicker you get at it, it's, it your skills get better, um, you, the, the, the confidence just changes and it, it really just helps a ton with your calls. And, um, you know, I actually like when I'm, I talk to my sister and, and my cousin who they do fine in real estate, but they're, they're doing it a different way. You know, there's different ways of doing it. And I tell them, I'm like, I never felt like I had my finger on the pulse of the market more than I do now. And I'm almost, and I love it. It's made me appreciate real estate in a whole new way. Like, you know, being able to go from call list to call list, from neighborhood to neighborhood and see the different trends. I mean, it's crazy, you know, and, and people ask like how the market is and, and you could literally say, well, it depends. I mean, over here, you're looking at da-da-da-da-da compared to over here, da-da-da-da-da. That's good money for what you're paying over there. You know what I mean? And And the more you do that, um, the confidence just swells, you know what I mean? And it just really 
once you have that confidence, you know, then there's nothing stopping you. So I think that's 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 really important that I do every day, I guess, to answer your question a long way. Dual, dual purpose, man. Right, right, exactly. Like, like you're making the calls to learn the market, to create relationships, to get a deal done today, to find out who doesn't want to do business with you. Like there's so many reasons outside right. of just doing deals. Mm -hmm. if, if everybody would open their mind up to all the real reasons you're making these calls and all the benefits, dude, it, it's addictive. Right. And that's so, why, and that's why I wanted to, and to go along with what you're saying about the deals and about how I was taught before, I've always, my dad's an attorney. Like I, I always, and, and I always want to feel like a valuable resource. I don't want to just look like a salesman. I don't want people to look at me as just, so oh, here's that guy, like turn away. Like I want to be someone that people come to if I can help them in a way, but be a real valuable resource, you know? And if, if you're looking for that deal, then you're never going to appreciate like the actual value that what we do as agents or what we're supposed to do by providing market information and knowing actual trends and stuff that's going on, you know? Not just doing it from deal to deal to deal to deal. You don't learn anything that way. Yeah, no doubt. Guys, if you have any questions for me or Zach, feel free to type it in. So do you do anything besides calls to uh, create business? Or what do you do outside of, of calls? Um, I mean, not necessarily. I hate open houses. I, I know that they're, they're, they're really good. But right now I'll do them. Like for my, my new listings coming up until I get really busy, then I won't. But I... I've done those. Um, my sister's real good at those, and we we work together for a little bit. So she she has all these little tricks on how to capture clients and you know throw open houses and stuff to get leads that way. So I'll do those um, from time to time on the weekends. But generally, no, I like my weekends clear to do my my hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, the other way though is is I'd say Facebook ads. Um, I sign up for for a company that I'm sure people have seen, Jason Wardrop and Arsenal MKG and and there's like another one, agentleads.com, whatever. And it's essentially the same thing. Like once you learn the, the fundamentals of it, it's basically just a, a landing page. Um, and then you just follow up with, you know, capturing those leads. So I've messed around with that too. I feel really confident in, in doing those type ads. But since signing up with you, I've wanted to just keep it as simple as possible. And I said, I'm only going to do, I'm going to just get really good at one thing. And that's another book that, the one thing, you know, just really focus on one thing and master it. And then down the road, I, I think I mentioned this to you, is just use the market report as like branding mm -hmm. and stick the same strategies, but don't worry about a landing page. Just let them click right through and see the market report for branding, whatever, and just focus only on the calls. Like to me, I'd much rather have someone tell me no than do, you know, a ton of follow up and have someone messing with me through Facebook Messenger, you know, so. I'd rather just get really good at one thing. So essentially, that's that's pretty much all I'm doing right now, dude. I can say, man, you you got it. Like the mindset, your actions, like you, all you got. The only the only thing between you, where you are, and where I am, is just time now. And see, dude, I wish I wish I had somebody telling me all the stuff that I'm teaching you guys back when I was in your shoes, because I would be like. Ooh, I, it would be crazy if I would have started, if I didn't have to go through all this and learn it on my own. I mean, it took me from 2002 to 2008. Let's see, that's six years. It took me six years to kind of like to where I like kind of got it. And then it took me another. Let's see, a. Another six years to like perfect it. Took me six years to like figure it out and another six years to like perfect it and get it to where it's really, you know, something that really, you know, um, produced the kind of results I wanted to in terms of creating those relationships with people. Yeah. So all I can say, man, is that you're in a super good position. Um, you know, me and I'm sure everybody else is really proud from where you've been and where you are now with the direction of your life. You got a really, you got a really good thing going, man. I appreciate it. And that's really reassuring because I'll tell you that year that last year felt like eternity. And so to hear you say that, you know, you went that those many years where you're figuring it out, that really, that really is reassuring. So I appreciate that a lot.
for sure. Oh yeah, man. I mean, you're in your fourth year. It was six years before I even like figured out I was supposed to be um, creating relationships and not going after deals. Wow. You know. And then by the time I figured it out, I still like didn't fully commit because I was like everybody else scared, yeah. scared because I needed a paycheck. And I thought the relationship route was a long term play. <clears throat> and then it took me another six years to realize, wait, the relationship route is the long and short term play at the same yeah. time. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's good, man. So. OK, so you don't do anything else, really, besides just make phone calls, which is all I did. I did postcards and letters and stuff. But um, other than that, that was it. Right now, it's all I can afford my budget. I mean, the next step with my first escrow, I'll close because it's been a while. Like I just shared my story. But as, as I, I already have my my area where I have my high turnover and everything where I'll start doing the monthly postcards. But. Mm -hmm. I, I decided right away because I was going back and forth. Should I get the dialer? Then it was like, should I do the extra 50 for the trip? I was like, screw it. I'm going all in. That's going to be the highest producing dollar for, for my time right now. Mm -hmm. um, and decided on that. I was like, I'll, I'll worry about the postcards when I, when I, when that time comes. And then with what I was saying with the Facebook deal, I'm not opposed to, to doing that. But the way that I think that it it makes sense for me would be to have like an ISA, just like one person that worked only that, you know, other than that, I, I only use it for branding, you know, and uh, just pump, pump it like crazy. And then just, you know, kind of just share what I'm doing on a day to day, but totally just keep it simple. But until I can, I, until I'm doing enough business to where I, I need someone to capture those leads and where it's actually making sense dollar wise and, I'm I'm putting all my time into something that's producing money for me, which is phone calls. You know, what uh, what at what level is that? Because I'm not there yet. I have no. I would say. <laughs> I mean, I would look at you if you're not there yet. Then I mean, it's, I've got a ways to go. Then <laughs> I, I just think. Well, I, I just think that you know I, I find it interesting because I've studied teams and stuff, and you would know more than me because you actually see the money come in and out of. Uh, you know, you see the million, the million dollar agents, whatever on the, on the shows and stuff that, that, you know, they're doing over a billion or 500 million. I don't know exactly how those numbers break down. You know, I, I kind of get it on a business sense. I know there's expenses and, and all these things. So I, I really don't know what, when that time would be. I basically, I'm just going to follow your model to a T. Like what I tell people when they ask me in the program, I'm like, don't think about anything else. Just do what Ricky does. So you know, when the postcards come, they'll come. Then I'll just do the assistant until I feel like if, if I'm ever completely overwhelmed, then maybe I'll expand, you know, just kind of. But right right now, it's just simple. Make calls, market report. That's it, you know. I would say get to where you have 30 listings and then, yeah. hire, an, and then hire an assistant. Okay. You know, not an ISA, somebody that just processes your deals and sets up all the showings for uh, agents that want to show your listings. Right. You and know? then, and then your assistant also does TC stuff too. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, a little bit like she sets it up with the title company and stuff, but I'm, and she sets up inspections and stuff, but I, anything with the client though, I handle, you know, like, um, if it, like for t like for instance, we, in our brokerage, I could pay two fifty because we have a guy that does TC. And he'll basically be the go between passing, like getting documents signed from the other agent or the disclosures. You know, he does all yeah. that. Stuff. Is that what your assistant basically does? Yeah, she yeah, she just she does that. But uh, she does all she gets stuff signed and stuff like that. But like if like if there's an inspection done and we got to negotiate some stuff, then, uh, you know, then I do that. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? Like anything that's that has to do with the client, because I want the client to know that they're getting me whenever they, whenever they call in, whenever there's a situation, I right. want them to know that it's me that's going to be handling that directly, for and sure. I'm going to make sure that 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 goes the way it's supposed to go, and then I'm not right. going to hand it off to somebody else. That's a big reason why I retain a lot of clients because I don't have a team, or yeah. I'm giving everybody all these other jobs that. You know, those other people aren't me. You know, right. people do business with me because they want me. So I really believe the team thing waters your relationship building uh, part of the business down. But right. teams are more predicated on volume. 
you know, they focus more on closing a ton of deals. And, and, and so it does water the relationship part now, because a lot of times the client doesn't know who they're going to talk to when they call in, you know, or, or who's yeah. handling what. Right. I, I, I agree, man. I mean, so let me ask you, do you, um, like your work life balance. I mean, I see you kite surfing and doing what you love to do. I mean, and it seems like you go home at a regular hour. You don't feel overwhelmed. Like with the amount hey, of no. listen, man, there's no oh, such thing. That's the thing that I see you doing it. And I'm like, why do you hear the other side of it from these team guys that they, they always say, Oh, well, you know, but I'm my life, you know, I, I like having this and that. I'm like, well, I'm seeing this guy do it. And you know, I just don't, Here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. Those guys are working just as hard or harder than me. And they're making like 400,000. Like right. they're doing like 1.5, but they're making like three or 400. And they're right. working just as hard or harder than me. Here's the, here's the thing. They, they started doing a team when they were at whatever level. And they weren't, at, they weren't that efficient at that level. And so and so when they were at that that stage in their business, they saw the inefficient side of the business and they thought this is this is where this is like real estate. It's inefficient. Right. And so if they were to continue going down that path of the inefficiency, then, yeah, you will work 80 hours, 90 hours a week to right. produce. But if, if, if you were if you if you like so they started building a team. But if they would have that point not built the team. And continued being a single agent and work through those inefficiencies and got to the level where they're working on a very efficient level. See, the thing with me, the reason why I can live the way that I want to live and be a single agent is because everything I do is 100 percent efficient. You know, that's why I only focus on property owners. Right. That's why, you know, I don't go. I don't do buyer leads. I don't advertise for buyers. Yeah. But I get a but I get a lot of buyers and I love buyers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like like today I showed property twice and then tomorrow I'm showing property I think three times. And so sometimes you run into the situations where you have some stuff you gotta do and you gotta show property, but that's just part of it, you know? Right. And uh, I work on the weekends sometimes, but those guys that have teams, they're working on the weekends and, and if they're not then they're taking a half a million dollar pay cut. I, I don't mind going in on the weekends and showing some property because here's the thing, dude, it's not a work life balance. There is no such thing, dude. It's all life. Right, like right. when you love what you do, like yeah. it's all life. There's no, like for me, there's no like in the middle, there's no like breakdown point, you know? Like, yeah. Exactly. yeah. No, I yeah. think that's, that's huge that I've learned from you is, is exactly what you just said. And also you could correct me, but it's like you, if you just integrate it, but when you're away from work, you completely separate, you know, and you're, you're able to at least like completely have freedom from that. Then you can do everything. As long as you're not at home on your phone 24 seven or whatever, then, Either way, it's all intertwined. And in real estate, it's like you may work on a Saturday, but maybe like you, like I've seen you, you, you take off Wednesday afternoon for kite surfing because it's because it's open on your calendar. Or if I yeah. want to go play golf, you know what I mean. But I work yeah. Saturday, so we have that we have that freedom. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah, there's there's no need to really like force it to be structured Monday through Friday. And I have a team, and it's it has to be a certain way. That that totally yeah. makes sense. And here's the thing, too, man. It's all about using your resources, right? right. So like I have an assistant. She right, can do right. A lot, she can do a lot of things, right? Okay. But then like if I have a buyer that I don't want to handle, you know, I got it's an internet lead I got for free somewhere or whatever, I can give it to another agent in my office that still right. pays me still pays me 25%, right. but I didn't ha I don't have to pay their expenses. I don't have to train them. I don't have to deal with all the stuff that all the responsibilities of a team leader but I can still operate like a team because I have all these agents, even agents not even in my office. I can refer the buyer to anybody right. and still get that referral fee for, for nothing. Yeah. And, you, so, you and you don't have to go on, on appointments for them. You don't have to do any work for them. Yeah. And I, I totally, I'm a hundred percent on board. That's another thing that sold me on signing up with zero to diamond too, is because that I, I, in my head, I always knew there's got to be a way, you know, I like, I felt like I was being fed something that it's not that it doesn't work. It's just not the way that I would see it. 
working for myself, you know? So I remember seeing your stuff and kind of, uh, I was like, once I embraced it, it just made total sense for sure. And I'm not against the team thing. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Here's yeah, the I'm, thing. Not, I'm not either. Yeah. No, if you're, if you're good at it and, and you want to like, that's how you want to live and that's how you want to structure your business and you want to sell, you know, you want your team to see, you want to, you want 20 people, you want to sell 60 million and make three, 400,000. And that's good for you. And you're happy. That's what I want. I want everybody to be happy and satisfied with where they are. Right, you know, right. I can't, I can't, dude, I cannot inject my ambition into everybody. Like, yeah. you know, my drive and where I want to be and what I'm doing is on a whole nother level, you know, and everybody just doesn't have that same, drive inside of them and some people are happy with that 250 a year and if that's the case dude I mean it's I'm all about it but at the same yeah. time I got to express myself as in you can be a single agent I, I want to make the statement that you can be a single agent and you can still live that same life as everybody says that you have to have a team for you can yeah. live that same life as a single agent if you use your resources you're efficient you're smart you adapt you know, all the things that I teach. Right. Right. No, I totally agree. And I'm not, I, I, I'm not against the team either. Just like I'm not against, you know, these, uh, these, I guess, teams that, that their sole way of getting businesses through Facebook ads or people that their sole way of getting businesses through open houses, everyone's got their own way. But for me, what makes sense is I want to make the most, I want to, I want to maximize the dollar for the value of time I'm putting in and, yeah. and just what way it makes sense for me if it can work. You know, I mean, like, again, I, I would keep referencing my sister because we're close and she's in the business. I watch her. She's starting her own team. She actually just left the brokerage I was at. So I'm watching her kind of like get it off the ground and try to hire agents and stuff. And I'm like, that's interesting. It's just like I'm not wired that way. It just doesn't to me. I'm like, that's cool. I just have no desire to do that whatsoever. And that's fine. You know? Like if, I, if I can make the most amount of money per hour and help the maximum amount of people and actually impact their lives, make a difference. That's what I want to do. Right. Let's Tell see. At, let's see. I got a question here from Nora. She wants to know what's your last phone call like before you get the listing? Um, <laughs> well, um, I want to sell. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, if so, I guess um, I'm. I'm. I, I'd say to answer that with where I'm at in my business, and and not to sugarcoat it, is I'm still figuring it out. But one thing again, making tons of calls and thousands, and if you just commit to doing, you know, as much as much call volume as I've committed to in a short amount of time, you get you get really quick on triggers, you know, and hearing. Uh, motivations that you may not have heard if, if you're not doing as many calls. So, um, you know, asking, okay, well, they, they may say, oh, well, we're not thinking, you know, maybe a year from now or whatever. Then you keep digging, digging, digging and saying, well, look, I just want to come out and, and see and, and see the house and give you a fair estimate of what your house is worth. Would you mind if I came out this week? Let's just set a time and talk. Uh, things like that. And then when you go out there, you just come fully prepared and you just close the deal and you're there, you know? So I think to answer your question, it's just listening to the triggers and then just going, you know, asking the right questions, you know, and every situation is completely different. But if, if there's a smidgen of opening, go for it, you know, just ask for it. And then you close for the listing once you're actually there, you know? Um, one thing that I, and I, this, this, with with my lack of experience, maybe there's other. I, I think also the way other people do sales is different. But I was also taught through older systems and other people. You ask all these pre qualifying questions before the listing. You mm -hmm. and I'm like, I just think I I always go back to and it's the same thing with my market report. Like, what would I want to receive on a weekly basis? Well, how would I want the conversation to go? Like, we get solicited all the time. There's nothing more that I cannot stand than when someone calls me. And they keep re repeating the same thing over. I'm like, dude, I'm not interested. I'm giving you the time of day by not hanging up on you. But this is why I'm not interested. Like, right, right. I may even say right now, but they keep repeating, repeating. That just doesn't, high pressure doesn't work. And one thing I've learned is like, don't close for the listing on the phone call before you get there. Like, play it super soft. And then when you go there, come with all your guns blazing. 
and don't like hard sell it when you're there, but just be overly prepared, you know, and then just know when the right time to ask the question, you know, just really listen. And then when, when the window opens, just you ask the question. So if, if, this, if this all makes sense, you know, are you ready to do the deal right now? You know, Adam wants to know what my take on is on open houses. Do I do them? Um, I don't do them unless my seller just really wants me to do the open house. Um, but I will say it's all about adapting to your, um, uh, your market. Like if I was in a market where open houses were the thing and I was losing listings because other agents were doing open houses, I would be the open house king. You know, I would be the master of open houses. I would throw the best open houses of anybody around. So it all just depends on your market. What do sellers expect? So on and so forth. But no, I don't do them because, it, you know, it's just not a thing down here. Um, but rarely, maybe twice a year, I'll do one for a seller that just really wants me to do one and I'll do one. Jonas wants to know one thing I don't get is how you deal with so few buyers. It seems like in my market, it's somewhere between 60, 40 or even 50, 50 split for top producer, most of which are teams. Here's the thing, Jonas, those uh, teams are buying leads. You know, they're buying leads. They're not working efficiently. See, I work efficient, right? So the thing is, is I, I, I want to work buyers, but yeah. they're not, they're not as efficient to work with. And they're even more efficient if they're if they're property owners. Mm -hmm. So my goal is is just to work with property owners, primarily for buyers and sellers. And the thing is this, man, take a look in your market at some of the single agents. Look at some single agents that are high producers, and call them up and ask them and, and text me or something or let me know what their buyer to seller ratio is, because it's going to be it's you can't really compare it to teams, man, because Teams buy leads for their team team uh, yeah. members. I mean, that's just that's how a team yeah. operates. It's expensive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So guys, man, this has been a heck of a show, dude. I really, uh, I really appreciate you taking some time out, man, to uh, to, no to share with us. My pleasure. It's uh, I'm I'm fired up for it. Um, any last thoughts or? Uh, you know, anything else you want to say before we call it a day? Um, not, I mean, nothing too profound. Just, just do, do what Ricky teaches. I mean, do the work. If you do it, at least make a hundred phone calls a day. You know, if you, if, if you can't one day, it's okay. Don't, don't beat yourself up over it. You don't have to necessarily make a thousand calls the next day. Like don't put too much pressure on it, but just do the work, you know? Um, and, and, one day at a time, one, one minute at a time, you know, every phone call at a time, you know, don't put too much pressure and it's going to just snowball. I promise you it'll snowball. Cause I, I started out as reluctant as you are. If you're there and you haven't started yet, if you haven't got your first listing yet, whatever it may be, it'll come. You just gotta, you gotta do the work and just commit. That's, that's the biggest thing, you know, just, just commit and do it. You know, that's, that's all I'd say. And, yeah, take pride in what you do. Man, we're going to end it with that, dude. I appreciate it so much, bro. Thanks, man. You're the man. Thanks, Everybody appreciates you. So we'll talk soon. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you.